Hello and uh, welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Uh, you know, I want to continue on with these uh, little beginner ham radio podcasts. So <clears throat> what I wanted to do today was uh, just show the beginners some pictures and kind of describe those pictures because uh, a lot of times, uh, I remember when I first entered the hobby, I heard a bunch of terms and I didn't know what uh, the older hands were talking about and I was kind of too embarrassed to ask because I didn't want to show uh, uh, how silly I was so, and what little knowledge I had. So uh, uh, for the beginners today I want to show them some uh, radios and uh, also show them uh, some antennas and a meter and some tuners uh, and hopefully uh, this will help them get by some of the jargon so let's get going uh, last time you know we uh, we if you look at the first video I did uh, uh, I kinda gave them a recommendation on a radio so let's start with that and if you'll remember uh, the radio I recommended uh, Along with the handy talkies, which were the uh, Osham and the Bing Fing or Bing Fong or whatever you call that one, I uh, recommended that they go out there and look for a dual band handy talkie. And I also recommended this particular radio right here, this Kenwood 281A 2 meter radio. Uh, for their first uh, base station mobile radio. It's very low cost, about $135 is what I remember Richard over at Main Trading uh, having on these. So uh, it's not very expensive. Uh, I like it for a couple of reasons. It's got this keypad on the microphone so you can enter to the frequencies right from the microphone. And also it's got a front firing speaker uh, a lot of times you know the radios will have a speaker on either on the top or down here on the bottom and depending on how they're mounted uh, the sound might get muffled a little bit but this one fires right out of the front and I kind of like that I also like the fact that it on high power it puts out 65 watts on two meters and as you know I'm way out in the country and I wanted something with a little more punch so this kind of met my needs uh, for an emergency 2 meter radio and I have one of these in my uh, go kit uh, for emergencies and I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it to you as a regular radio and as one of your first radios because of its uh, low cost and seems to work very well at least for me all right so that's the Kenwood 281A now remember it's just a two meter radio so you're gonna be able to get on these 146 repeaters uh, no problem but you will not be able to get on the 70 centimeter repeaters with this radio all right uh, another one I'd recommend to you, and let's jump into dual band radios. So here's a little Yaesu FT7900 right here, and it's a dual band radio. So it's going to do the 146 and also the 440 frequencies, 2 meters, 70 centimeter, and uh, Seems to be have good reviews on eham.net and uh, would make a fine dual band radio for you. Now remember with these mobile base station units, their, their intended purpose was to be mounted in a car and be connected up directly to the battery. 12 volt battery so if you put these in a base station you're going to also have to go out there and buy a 12 volt power supply along with this radio you won't be able to plug it into the wall on 110 it's meant to run off a 12 volt battery 
at 13.8 volts. 13.8 volts, which is what a normal 12 volt car battery puts out. So your the power supply that you go out and buy, it's going to put out 13.8 volts. Uh, and it can be plugged into the wall and then this radio would attach to the power supply and receive the proper uh, volts. So here's a uh, Yesu uh, 7900. Again, dual band radio would make a fine uh, radio for you for your first radio. And let's jump up a little bit to the Kenwood V71. Uh, just by looking at it, you can tell it's going to be probably a little bit more expensive than uh, the Yesu that you just saw. Uh, for one, the <coughs> faceplate, like the Yesu, is removable. So you can mount the box somewhere separately from the control faceplate. The Yesu is, uh, has the exact same feature, but notice on this one, it's actually showing uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters on the screen. And this is what's called a cross-band repeat. Cross-band repeat. It can listen on both frequencies at the same time. And it can also cross band over to another frequency. So you could be listening or transmitting on uh, 145500 and it would go out on 439640. So, what a lot of uh, hams like to do is they have a little handy talkie and they sit out in the backyard with you know, two watts or four watts or whatever and relax in the backyard and they listen to the repeater that might be a long way away on a, on this radio which is inside the house and they can just transmit on a frequency and it cross band repeats over to the um, uh, repeater frequency. So uh, Personally, uh, I did not buy a crossband repeat. I just personally just didn't see the need for doing that, but a lot of hams like them. Uh, crossband repeat uh, type radios, especially the function where you can listen to two different uh, uh, frequencies at the same time. And this uh, Kenwood would certainly be able to do that for you. Of course, it's going to be a little more expensive than that Yesu that uh, you just saw a few minutes ago. And then another one, and the one that I, I bought for my car was this ICOM 880H. ICOM 880H, and uh, it's a dual band radio. It does not have cross band repeat. But it does have what's called D Star. So it's D Star ready. And there, if you'll just jump on Google and Google D Star, uh, <clears throat> you're going to get a bunch of sites that will explain what D Star means to you. Means there are special D Star repeaters that. Uh, basically operate like an analog repeater would except that the signal can go out over the internet so uh, and come out someplace else they have uh, kind of a few different uh, capabilities one would be you could be riding in your car and link the repeater to a repeater that might be overseas and when you transmit your voice not only goes out uh, over the airways uh, where you're driving around but it also is sent out over the internet uh, to a repeater that might be in England or somewhere and someone driving around in a car in London uh, can hear you. So 
kind of a neat feature it's a digital mode and I, I wanted that capability in the radio that I have in my car so I bought an 880H with D-Star and encourage you just to go on the internet and Google uh, D-Star and you can find out all about it now uh, the Chinese you know have entered the fray on radios and one of the kind of new Chinese dual band radios is call, is one called an any tone any tone a n y t o n e and here it is and it is a dual band radio cross band repeat and as with all Chinese radios and with the newer radios uh, Kenwood and others you really cannot program these radios uh, from the uh, keypad here you can't do it it's just too complicated uh, you know you could do it but you'd have to memorize a whole series of uh, inputs <laughs> off of this keypad in order to uh, program in a frequency so most people now when they buy a radio they also buy the programming cable that goes with that radio and they program all the frequencies in uh, use uh, plugging it into a computer so I'd encourage you if you buy the Yesu or you buy the ICOM you buy this Chinese uh, any tone or you buy that Kenwood that you also buy a programming cable with it and make it a whole lot easier to get up and running when you get the radio anyway here's this any tone and it's uh, got a pretty fair price on it uh, at $299 and again it's cross band repeat the reviews on it uh, I'd have to say are uh, not the best that you'll ever read it, it seems to me that it, it functions probably okay but it does have some quirks to it uh, and you can jump on the internet and you know google up any tone uh, review let me give you the number on that the number on that is an any tone AT5888 AT5888 and if you just Google that up and put the word review on there you'll get some reviews on this and you'll see what I'm talking about but um, any of these would certainly be sufficient for your first uh, radio any of the ones that I've shown you now let's talk just a little bit about antennas you probably heard some hams talking about what they call a j-pole uh, antenna sometimes they talk about a two meter j-pole sometimes they talk about dual band uh, j-pole antennas so let me just show you one and here's a j-pole antenna and I know you're gonna say well <laughs> I can probably make that myself and yes you can and there are plans on the internet to uh, for various types of what we call J-pole antennas and most of them can be uh, built uh, right there in your garage uh, using a few basic parts so but they do sell them on the internet uh, so you can uh, google up J P-O-L-E, J-Pole, and start reading about a J-Pole antenna. And this is a picture of one. They come in various different designs. Uh, let's see, here is another J-Pole antenna, a commercial type made by Arrow, Arrow, A-R-R-O-W. And you could Google that up and take a look at a commercial dual band uh, antenna. Now these will work just fine if you're uh, not too, too far away from a repeater. Uh, they'll allow you to hit repeaters, uh, I would say, depending on high, how high up you get, maybe out to 30 miles, maybe. 
but uh, if you're far, far away from a repeater, they're not going to have enough gain to uh, get you out there. So a lot of us who live farther away from the Dallas Metroplex, Metroplex uh, we, we've gone out there and bought what we call a vertical uh, dual band antenna. And uh, uh, there's myriad brands and types out there. I just want to show you a couple of them. Here is the Comet GP1, a Comet GP1 vertical dual band. And notice it's got the ground plane uh, rods on it. Anyway, this is a commercial antenna you can buy if you want to set up something at your house. All you need is a little pole of some sort to mount it to, a little mast, and uh, you'll be on the air on both bands. Now, most of these VHF, UHF antennas are resonant, resonant on 2 meters and 70 centimeters, so they normally don't require any kind of antenna tuner. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The one I use is a little bit bigger version, and it's the Comet GP9. And here it is. Again, there's the ground plane rods on the bottom. Uh, you know, it basically makes a uh, artificial uh, ground for this vertical antenna uh, that, you know, uh, gives it gain etc etc so uh, again you don't need any kind of radials or wires running out of it or anything it can just be mounted on a mast but keep in mind this one is 17 feet tall and that's the one I'm using uh, way out here in Quinlan Texas uh, to make it a little bit easier to hit the repeaters over in Dallas Texas so I'm using this Comet GP9. Works very well. All right. <clears throat> I've shown you a vertical, and I've shown you some J-poles. I, I wanted to just show you the long wire antenna that I'm using at my house. Uh, once you get into the HF frequencies, you know, they can buy a 400-page a book on different types of HF antennas, so we're not going to try to do that. I'm just going to show you what I use at my house right now, and it's an antenna called a QSO King, QSO King, and if you'll Google that, uh, QSO King antenna, uh, you're going to go right to this fella that makes these and sells them. They are very low cost, uh, around $69. And basically it's a box, and I'm going to show you what's inside the box in a minute, and a long wire. And you mount this box up in the air somewhere, and you put out this wire. And it can be in various different configurations. It can be just a sloper that's up in a tree, or it can be a V, inverted V shape, you know, it, d different shapes will work. Uh, <clears throat> it's got uh, pretty neat, some pretty neat features. Here's the uh, little wing nut that holds the antenna wire. Then it's got a uh, strain relief on it. You can put the wire through here and it won't pull on this uh, connection as much. And then it's got a little hook at the top so you can uh, raise it up into a tree or attach it to a mast somewhere. It's also got a ground lug on this side. Uh, I've used it both ways, with a ground, without a ground. It worked both ways. Uh, right now I have a, gr a wire running from here all the way to the ground rod that's beneath the... Uh, vertical uh, uh, Comet GP9 antenna all the way down into the ground right below it. So uh, I am using it grounded, but the 
Maker says it will also work ungrounded, which I verified that it does work ungrounded. And what's inside the box? Well, a great big uh, Torrid wrapped. You can see his construction is pretty good on this. It's uh, quite well built for the price. And yes, you could make one of these yourself. Uh, uh, if you could get some specifications on how to wind this torrid, uh, I just chose to step out there and spend $69 and have a pre-built one. But yes, you can make these uh, yourself if you're so inclined. And then uh, I wanted to show you a meter that I'm using right now. I'm using it in my uh, ham shack, and I'm, I also have an extra one that I carry around in my go a go kit. And this is an MFJ 842 VHF UHF SWR meter. Now, standing wave ratio, and basically uh, it's got two needles on it one that shows forward power and another one that shows reflected power and of course you don't want any reflected power uh, at around a two to one two to one SWR most radios are going to start uh, dropping back their power to protect themselves from this reflected power. So you always want to run under 2 to 1 and preferably under 1.5 to 1. So this little meter kind of tells me that when I key up, if everything's okay. If I had a short in the coax, of course, this needle would jump way up. Okay, and all the power would be coming back into the radio, which would burn out the finals transistors in the radio. So you don't want that. So this kind of tells me I'm not real interested in how accurate it might be. I just want to know that, uh, you know, everything's going out and hardly anything is coming back. And this meter works just fine for that purpose. And uh, it's about $59 from MFJ. And again, it's an MFJ uh, 842. MFJ 842 SWR meter. I'd encourage you to have at least one of these in your shack uh, <coughs> so that you can make sure that uh, the antenna and everything is working properly. And uh, one other thing I wanted to show you was you've heard the terms antenna tuner. And I wanted to show you a couple of antenna tuners. When you get into uh, HF, uh, more than likely you're going to need an antenna tuner in order to get the SWR of the antenna, the HF antenna, to resonance, to resonance, so that uh, the power's going out and it's not actually coming back into the radio. Now, I need to say, uh, if you got an antenna that's not resonant, this is not really going to fix uh, the antenna. It's still going to be non-resonant, resonant, but it will protect your radio. So uh, it's always best to have an antenna that's pretty much resonant on the band that you're going to work on so that you have a good uh, power output out of that antenna and you just don't convert it to heat uh, along the coax. But anyway, here's a little uh, LDG automatic antenna tuner, a Z100+. Plus, Z100+. Plus. And uh, it's good up to about 100 watts of transmission power. And basically, you just press a button, and when you get a green light, it means it has adjusted the SWR uh, so that uh, it's something below 1.5 or so, and everything will be okay for you to transmit. 
So some folks uh, use what's called an automatic antenna tuner, and here's one of them. This one's about $159. And uh, the only thing I would have to say about automatic antenna tuners, uh, uh, I intend to get myself one of these at some point uh, just for my go kit because it's very convenient out in the field because all you have to do is push a button. But if you're going to have an automatic antenna tuner that's going to be legal limit, in other words, you can run an amp through it, now you're talking about big bucks. Because if you want to run 1,200 watts through a, an automatic antenna tuner, you're going to pay six, seven hundred dollars for that tuner uh, to be able to handle that much power. So uh, when I first set up my shack, I looked at a bunch of high power capable automatic antenna tuners, and I just couldn't justify the expense. So instead of buying an automatic tuner, I bought a used manual tuner, legal limit. So here's the one I bought. It's an MFJ 986, MFJ 986, roller inductor uh, type manual tuner. Again, legal limit, so I'm running my amp through this right now, and I bought it used on QTH.com. And I got to say, uh, my one of my Elmers, uh, John Walker, helped me with this when I was brand new to the hobby, and he helped me find it and uh, locate it on QTH, and actually recommended it to me as my uh, first manual legal limit tuner. And uh, what he said, and what I agree with, is that. Uh, it's much easier to operate this type of a manual tuner because it only has two knobs. It only has two controls that you have to adjust in concert with each other in order to get the most power out and the least reflected power back. And uh, some of these antenna tuners have three knobs, which makes it a little bit more difficult to tune. Uh, this one seems to tune real quick and never had a problem with it and I am running about 600 watts through it so uh, shouldn't actually be uh, testing it very much at 600 watts it shouldn't be uh, because it's rated up to 1200 I believe and this has worked just fine for me I bought it at a great price used off of QTH and again again it's an MFJ 986 and you can google that and you know put review on there and you'll see that it has pretty good reviews on eham and with that said uh, we've uh, taken you through about uh, three or four radios that might make a, a good radio for you. You remember this uh, uh, first radio? Here's that Kenwood 281A again, two meter only. And here's that Yesu uh, 7900 dual band. Doesn't have cross band repeat, but it is dual band would make a excellent radio for you for your first uh, mobile or base station setup. Anyway, with that said, as usual, I wish you clear skies and 73, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. And with that, I'm out of here.